Welcome to today's event. I'm Jackie Jones from Herefordshire Green Network, and we're delighted to be hosting Jamie Audley, who is CEO of Herefordshire Wildlife Trust. Um, the Wildlife Trust has been working for almost two years now on its Wilder Herefordshire scheme, so I think we're going to be hearing about that. And Jamie joined the Trust as CEO in August 2022, and I think it's fair to say we've um, been feeling the um, impacts of his dynamism across Herefordshire. Now, before that, uh, Jamie led the RSPB's Future Nature team, uh, which was established to tackle systemic drivers of nature loss in our economy. His career has focused on environmental and social transformation, first as a teacher and community organizer, but also in business, in local government, and more recently in leadership roles with uh, Share Action and another organization, uh, Claw Social Leadership. Jamie says, according to the website, I grew up with the experience of being deeply connected to nature and I'm excited to be involved in helping to create a wilder Herefordshire where nature and people thrive together. So I'm going to stop sharing. Jamie will start sharing and let's all welcome him to speak to us. Over to you, Jamie. Um, thank you so much, Jackie. And that introduction was a humbling one and made me giggle. So it's a pleasure to see you all. Uh, I'm sure you can all see me and hear me. Uh, and it's great to see some familiar faces, trustees, members, uh, agitators with the Wildlife Trust on the call. So um, please feel free to chip in, uh, make comments in the chat. Um, I'm reasonably informal, but hopefully we'll have a light structure to today. Um, yes, so uh, it, bird watching was my passion. My dad made a fat ball with me uh, in the back garden in Battersea when I was about four or five, I think. Uh, all the birds flew in, the different tits, chaffinches, uh, many of the birds, which we sadly, even today, common ones, know are declining, uh, arrived, and I was hooked. So, um, yeah, we're the family that spans kind of a bit of unionism uh, uh, on one part with my mum as an NHS worker and dad as an environmentalist, uh, the career and different things I've done, uh, Jackie mentioned. But kind of jack of all trades, master of none uh, is perhaps a bit of me. Uh, but taking action is a kind of golden thread. Uh, and I think if anything, I was hired... Uh, to lead Herefordshire Wildlife Trust to develop our culture of action uh, and to, I hope, think reasonably strategically linked to the big challenge that we're going to discuss today. Um, so uh, we see before us on this slide a wilder Herefordshire with more nature everywhere. That's our simple vision and strap line. Uh, and we know, sadly, that Herefordshire's situation, uh, as compared to the rest of the country, we haven't escaped uh, the decline uh, if, in nature. And depending on which species you're looking at, uh, from 1970s levels, that's almost a 40 to 50% decline in some of those key species which we're all aware of. Uh, but look, you know Herefordshire well, uh, with this large bowl, aren't we? Uh, largely arable, 70% of our land being agriculture. Uh, we can talk about farmers and our relationship with those uh, members of our community, which is key for us as a trust. Uh, but interspersed in that bowl of agriculture is woodlands, commons, our wonderful iconic rivers, sadly under pressure, as you know, our cider and peri orchards being grubbed up too often because of the economy, economic changes linked to cider production, which we're aiming to support, and of course our beautiful meadows. Um, significant, if you're looking at the red there, significant nutrient pollution, as I'm sure most of us are aware of, and indeed, as mentioned, our orchards in decline. But on the positive, um, we have had uh, lots of species rich grassland increasing, uh, our woodland cover is on the rise, uh, and we've had the return uh, of uh, species like the pine martin across from Gloucestershire into Herefordshire, across to Wales, uh, and indeed butterfly species uh, flourishing and returning too. So I guess the key message if is, you know, uh, you we'd hear quite a lot now about the decline of nature. Uh, if there's hope, it's this, is that we know how to recover it. We need bigger, bolder, more connected corridors at scale uh, to support nature recover. And if we get that right with those habitats being supported uh, and the right kind of uh, diet and support for our key species, nature will return. Um, 
which keeps us positive, I hope. Um, this slide is a bit of a funny blobby one. Colleagues may have seen it before, but it aims in one slide and image to communicate our strategy, a wilder Herefordshire, doing more at scale in partnership with others. Uh, so increasingly working with farmers, uh, with our national conservation charities like the Woodland Trust, uh, with business, uh, to be working to think less about, in some respects, our own land. Uh, Herefordshire Wildlife Trust land is less than half a percent the 200,000 hectares across Herefordshire, but working more to provide advice and support, be it from your own back garden through to the local verge and the common outwards to our farming community, uh, of which there are circa 2,000 farmers, smallholders included. Uh, uh, so providing that advice to support landowners uh, make the change we need to see to recover nature and developing examples uh, of farming, working and living that puts nature first uh, to hopefully share practice uh, and spread that. That kind of goes to the heart of our change uh, that we're trying to achieve. Um, with you kind of going clockwise in the blobs, then um, supporting people take action. Um, in the past, I think if I tease wildlife trusts, we've looked after nature, we've thought about it as this wonderful thing to enjoy, but we've not perhaps been as confident as we increasingly aim to be to take action, to campaign, to do politics with a small p appropriately, um, to hold decision makers to account. So whatever your comfort zone for that uh, is your personal preference, we're keen to support it. And rivers contributing to the broad effort uh, in, our, in our county around recovering our rivers has been our key priority for campaigning. Um, on arrival, uh, people said to me, you've got 60 nature reserves, nearly 8,000 members now, but it's quite complicated to find out what's going on. So we're aiming to make things a bit simpler, to find out key, some key nature reserves to go to, to make them more accessible. So we have this language of developing flagship nature reserves, which of course, in terms of the access to nature, and while we think that we're all surrounded by it, perhaps in Herefordshire, um, a big problem for certainly our towns and urban communities uh, and in terms of the social deprivation in Herefordshire is that it is hard for many people to reach it. So trying to be, improve our accessibility and inclusion. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of our um, business efforts to bring in the money to sustain nature. Uh, these I don't want to dwell on for too long, but boils down our vision, more nature everywhere, a mission of leading local action for nature's recovery with our communities, uh, with our branches, with our town councils and parish councils, with groups, with schools, with young people, uh, to make sure that our own nature reserves are flourishing, to work in partnership, as I said, with others, to do more at scale, to share that learning uh, and indeed replicate things. Uh, and then, yes, a bit like I described, the fat ball experience of wonderful birds come up with uh, walks and talks uh, and supported guides to support connection to nature and that experience that wakes us up to nature uh, more proactively. So we've launched a lot of events uh, and more intentional experiences um, for our, our members and indeed anybody who would like to join to think about how businesses such as housing developers appropriately, um, our major employers uh, across the county uh, can also put business at the heart so nature at the heart of their business, uh, and as I say, being a bit bolder on campaigning. Um, I'll pause there for any immediate questions, challenges, things that people would like to ask about. Shout loud now, uh, or indeed pop it in the chat and I can pick it up. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'll aim to make progress. Um, I think the chat will perhaps start to flow, but can't see anything yet. So I'll keep going um, if that's okay. But Jackie, don't be shy to interrupt me. So nature recovery, uh, as I've mentioned, um, taking action for nature. Here's a slide showing our members attending the annual general meetings of the big supermarkets to highlight the issue of the River Wye. And I'll speak a bit about our diversification. Uh, that word always stumbles me around our income to try and improve our core income as a relatively small charity, retail, uh, Queenswood Country Park, other aspects of our estate. Um, so nature recovery, let's start the story um, at Bodenham Lake, probably one of the reserves that you may know uh, or are most visited by our members and people across Herefordshire. Uh, it's a wonderful heart of what we call the Lug Corridor, the Lug Wetlands, uh, and it's a former gravel pit, uh, stopping about 40 years ago, I think. Uh, and uh, we've spent lots of energy to restore it, to add islands and beaches and mud, muddy areas to bring back waders and wintering ducks. 
uh, and to continue that expansion. If you can visualize Bodenham Lake uh, on the Lug Corridor, uh, we're trying to expand it and flow down uh, the River Corridor towards Hereford, almost the vision of connecting Lempster and Hereford as one wonderful place. On the top right, you can see an image of Bodenham Lake uh, it's kind of divided in half. There's a kind of a sanctuary area to the left of your screen uh, where we've got some wildlife refuge and places that are more inaccessible. But to the right, hides, orchards, walks that um, are relatively accessible. Um, uh, and we've been improving it uh, by, uh, again, if you're looking at the top right here, trying to connect down the valley to Oak Tree Farm. Uh, which is a piece of land that we acquired uh, in a recent time to start a new nature reserve uh, and indeed keep uh, making it wetter and wilder with, uh, it's a funny old word, world, but the picture here, what we call attenuation ponds, big scrapes uh, where the water, when the lug overflows or it rains heavy, can collect, can be stored, uh, supporting us be resilient to the increasing uh, extremes of intense winter rainfall and flooding, uh, as we all know, and increasingly, sadly, uh, many in our communities are affected by farming community economically, of course, uh, people's homes, to store that water, to slow the flow. Uh, and indeed, of course, in the summer, where we're seeing more extreme drought, low flow, uh, problems of oxygen uh, or a lack of oxygen, forgive me, in the river, uh, emphasizing and exaggerating or amplifying is the right word the challenges of eutrophication and the pollution of uh, phosphate and nitrates in our watercourse. Um, this slide communicates that as I say we're trying to expand down that corridor um, the superpower of the Wildlife Trust, as I like to think about it, is that we're hyper-local. Um, we are uh, in Herefordshire, connected to our communities to the best of our ability with nearly 8,000 members. Um, but to recover nature, as mentioned, we need to be bigger and bolder and more joined up. And this is a, a picture of the region uh, where we've started collaborating in what we call the Seven and Why Nature Partnership with other wildlife trusts, but also the Woodland Trust, the National Trust, uh, the Rivers Trust, all the trusts and more uh, to be thinking about our big river corridors and really prioritising the aim to invest at scale in the millions of pounds worth uh, in woodland corridors and in river corridors for the kind of impacts that we need to, to see for nature. Uh, that's work in progress. Uh, and as you as you know, the River Wye being uh, kind of then flowing into the Severn, uh, do we can aiming to join up the dots with collaboration across the region. Um, and yes, river corridors and woodlands and uplands are key landscapes where we're trying to kind of develop projects uh, and focus our efforts. We've been working in partnership with other wildlife trusts on a program called the Wilder Marches, uh, which aims to in the kind of the north uh, west of the county to be collaborating with landowners and farmers uh, in some of our wilder areas, river, uplands uh, and valleys, uh, which we're developing plans on a lug corridor from Lempster up towards Prestine to the source uh, of the lug uh, with our partners, Radnorshire Wildlife Trust. Some of our current projects, we've been uh, monitoring and recording uh, the ecology of our rivers. Uh, two colleagues here doing samples of the rivers, uh, analysing key parts of the lime and the lingon tributaries of the lug to identify what's happening, what does the river corridor look like, what's working well, what's not, so that we can provide advice uh, and tailored support to landowners uh, along that corridor and indeed capital investment uh, in uh, making changes to the landscape, leaky dams, buffer strips, um, woodland planting, um, uh, all the best approaches uh, that are possible to our rivers. Other charities like the Wine Usk Foundation uh, and our other partner Wildlife Trust doing likewise. We are uh, aimed to be the sum of our parts uh, and indeed, increasingly, we as a wildlife trust, uh, we support the citizen science effort through um, our volunteering work and uh, insurance, but aiming to better embed the recording of nature in the citizen science work. So if you've been a wonderful citizen scientist, you know you've measured the chemical and the pollution in the river, but we now have developed a survey with a local ecologist, Will Watson, many of you may know, to better monitor the state of nature that we can track a, to really understand what's happening. B, to, I think, better tell the story of the River Wye and Lug 
linked to the key you know, iconic species that the public and the nation will continue to understand and be motivated to engage with. Um, we're also doing work at scale across uh, Radnorshire in Wales uh, with the Y now National Landscape, formerly the Y Area of Natural Beauty, uh, on a programme called Y Adapt to Climate Change. This pro provides advice to landowners and local communities to respond to adapt and mitigate climate change in the years ahead. It will look at planting of land use changes and importantly aims to bring farmers uh, and local communities, parish councils, schools, etc., together uh, to be collaborating to for our members and supporters to be uh, supporting landowner efforts and farmers' efforts through surveying, through practical conservation, um, really to ad address the challenges. You know, sadly, we know it does sometimes happens of a kind of us and them culture or mentality uh, in the catchment. So, aiming to bring people together to share good practice. Uh, and for the long term, uh, think about different types of planting, um, apricots uh, or nuts uh, or indeed wine. Uh, these may be some of the changes we see in the catchment in the years ahead. Um, we've also been working on trees at scale, led by our partners, uh, Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust uh, and indeed Worcestershire Wildlife Trust, to increase woodland connectivity between the Wye Valley all, up, all the way up to the Wire Forest in the north a significant woodland corridor uh, and we're providing advice and investment and support uh, to create that corridor. Uh, the government have just started or launched a call to apply for a new national forest, uh, forest of the nation they're calling it, uh, perhaps a bit gimmicky but it has around 10 million pounds of investment uh, for woodlands in one particular place which we're aiming uh, to explore and pitch in for. Um, closer to home in Hereford and the Lug Meadows, which you may know, we've been successful with some uh, a programme to uh, look at the key grassland species and dropwort species on the Lug Meadows. We've currently got thousands of little saplings and um, um, yeah, kind of shoots that are being developed in uh, greenhouses that are ready for plugs, is the, language, the word I was looking for, to be planted out, uh, out to support the meadows. We're doing some work to signage um, and indeed uh, putting in a new bridge so that we can better get uh, cattle on and off the meadows, quite challenging at present, so that their movement and their hooves can support the regeneration uh, of the meadows and the key species there. To the best of our ability, we keep um, supporting the curlew, uh, a challenging one. It may sadly be too late for the lowland curlew in Herefordshire, but we keep uh, hopeful. Um, local wildlife sites. If you are a landowner or a smallholder, uh, we have a service supported by Herefordshire Council to identify uh, uh, what a designation called a local wildlife site. It's the kind of lowest, but it's still vital um, kind of uh, dis form of designation and not beneath a, beneath a formal nature reserve, but where there's really important wildlife. Um, really importantly, it, it, the designation helps protect against planning applications and developments some you know concern about that understandably if they do want to do development but if you own land or you can see beautiful land close to you that you think needs protecting uh, and want to look at a way that can happen then please be in touch link to local wildlife sites um, as I've mentioned we're training, aiming to work more closely uh, with farmers uh, uh, and indeed have launched a farm advice service to go out there provide advice to support farmers uh, identify um, income streams and ways of working with the government and DEFRA that can put nature first, but also be great for their business. Uh, and indeed, um, yeah, just looking at the chat, uh, hedge planting and other such income streams uh, could be part of it uh, as well. Um, so yeah, we're aiming to develop this as a paid for service uh, and something that will produce an income for the trust so that we aren't just chasing grant after grant uh, uh, and that being, uh, a, this is a, an approach, a business that we're launching in partnership with Worcestershire Wildlife Trust and Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust to do their work at scale uh, and for the region too. Um, and looking ahead, we have just been successful with our partners, Herefordshire Rural Hub, uh, really quite excitingly, uh, a programme called Yscapes. Um, it's a funding from DEFRA, uh, under what's called a landscape recovery two scheme, bit of a mouthful, but it's the kind of top level investment 
uh, and it gives the opportunity for about 40 farmers all across the lug and the Y corridors to come together to change their plan for land use on their land and develop a different approach to doing business and a business model for the next 20 years. So we're just forming that work. We'll be out assessing the situation at present, engaging with landowners, talking about possible changes, ultimately coming up with a business plan for them that says, look, uh, rather than having intensive maize or potatoes, uh, we could have a wilder, wetter, lower intensive approach to farming. If you've seen or heard of Ben Andrews or Ben Taylor Davies talk about their approach to farming, that gives you a flavour of it. Uh, but that's a key programme for the years ahead, which aims to address uh, and it won't be the total solution, but part of the cultural change in terms of intensive ag agriculture uh, across the catchment to address the issue of rivers. We are working with the Environment Agency too, appropriately on natural flood management. Um, and looking ahead, we'll be developing work with the um, around orchards, uh, especially in the Woolhope Dome area, um, again, in partnership with uh, um, you know, cider companies and landowners with orchards uh, and partner trusts. So that gives you a bit of a picture um, of all that we're doing to focus on in terms of nature recovery at scale and some of the different directions. There'll be many more things that are out there. So perhaps I'll pause. Maybe, Jack, you could take a lead to pose some questions or facilitate the conversation. Um, other ideas, challenge, critique of the trust, really welcome where people want to lean into it. Thanks, Jamie, that was that was terrific. So yes, that, do keep the questions coming, but first, if I may, I'm going to pose a question that was emailed in. Um, I invited a few people along from outside the county who don't necessarily know things here, um, but who, kind of work in this area. And one interesting question that came in, Jamie, was um, about ancient woodlands. Now, in, in some places, it's the ancient woodlands that are some of the most important places for nature, says my questioner. Mm. Um, but here, they're quite small and isolated. So a key question is how in Herefordshire they can be enlarged and connected up. And I don't know if that's going to be part of the y -scapes. You've certainly talked about the river mm. corridors, but um, woodland mm. corridors too? Yeah, so I mentioned this programme called Seven Treescapes, which has advisors specifically going out to meet with landowners. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I was just thinking, if you stop sharing screen, then yeah, um, sure. people will be able to see better. Grand. Of course. Is that better for you now? Yeah, I think that's grand. Good, yeah. thank you. Um, so yeah, great question, uh, and agree. Um, sadly, our woodland is very disconnected and pocketed and small, as you've mentioned there, Jackie, and the questioner mentioned. Um, so what have we done? We've been partnering with our colleagues in Gloucestershire on a programme I mentioned called Seven Treescapes to map uh, all the key um, uh, trees uh, and key woodland areas and think about how we could create this and join up the dots with some key corridors. One example, uh, would be uh, on the Woolhope Dome and kind of heading north, a corridor that would join up almost towards the Morven Hills is the aspiration uh, to identify how we can build out that corridor. So yeah, it's really by identifying where do we have existing pockets, how do we join the gaps, and then we're proactively going out there to support landowners identify what they might like to do, sources of funding and investment uh, to make that a reality. Um, so yeah, we keep going. Um, the big challenge is really capital investment uh, and some of the bureaucracy that sits behind woodland creation systems, but to the best of our ability, uh, we keep plugging away. And, and as I say, have this aspiration of what's called the Y to the wire forest, um, as uh, which goes through Herefordshire, Worcestershire and Gloucestershire, and uh, can indeed be expanded into Wales appropriately uh, to do just what your questioner asked. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, just looking at some of the questions we've got in the chat here. Ooh. So Amelie Greengoat Group, um, which is well represented here this evening, I think, mm -hmm. says they will welcome advice from the Wildlife Trust re regarding liaison with local landowners about friendlier hedge management. How do you, as a local group, coax your farming neighbours to do that? 
Yes, well, great question. Uh, and I think the first thing to say is, is to start with relationship. Um, you've mentioned your local farmers. So can you build relationships with them? Can you get to know them? Uh, can you be make them feel confident that you will work well with them? Uh, respectful that that is a two way relationship, but get out there, make connection, uh, aim to be positive. Number one. Secondly, uh, we've got advisors and support that can be introduced to those landowners uh, to make suggestions or provide advice. Um, we are aiming to develop a, a clearer tree and hedge strategy with um, CPRE Herefordshire. If there are colleagues on the call who are members uh, or indeed know CPRE Herefordshire and CPRE nationally well, you'll know that hedges is a really big focus of theirs. And so uh, the policy and the strategy and the campaigning uh, may in part be led by CPRE Herefordshire, but the kind of practical volunteering, hedge laying, uh, and advice to do things on the ground um, can come from us. Uh, we've got a great team that can support that. So yeah, very happy. Uh, either I can take an email if that's popped in the chat to introduce you to our relevant colleagues, or if you want to follow up with me directly, please do. Um, I think I'll pause there, but yeah, it takes time, doesn't it? Uh, I think there's a big culture of tidy hedges uh, short back and side to some farmers and landowners joke with me. Um, so again, indeed, sharing examples of the likes of Tony Norman, who's got wild and woolly uh, hedges uh, on his farm as one example, uh, changing that cultural approach to what a hedge can be. Uh, and then nationally, I guess the last thought, campaigning for different funding streams and indeed uh, approaches. Um, I think DEFRA increasingly trying hard on hedges and we'll keep pushing them there. Uh, thank you. Um, I see that Jim uh, Jim Hardy has got his hand up. So, Jim, please ask your question. Or oh, just a general comment, Jim. Uh, it's a general comment. <laughs> um, those who keep up with um, farming um, policy will know that the, the old EU payments are being phased out and will come to an end. I mean, they've been reduced dramatically already, but they'll come to a complete end in three years' time. And they are being replaced by various schemes um, which were sort of launched on the principle of public money for public goods, which I think is a very good policy. Um, but talking to farmers that I know, it's really depressing how little awareness there is of um, these new schemes and how much uptake there is. Because, I mean, for a small livestock farm like mine, the old basic payment scheme provided 50% of my income. And I don't, I'm not alone in that. I can't speak for the arable farmers since I don't know much about arable. But anyway, there are um, so lots of schemes now available for, for instance, looking after your hedges properly. And the uptake was disappointing to start with. So the rates of payment for that have been increased once, if not twice, I think. And the whole application process has been made easier. But somehow we, the message just isn't getting out there. You know, I mean, you would think it was a no brainer. If, I, if a farmer can get paid for looking after his hedges properly, in other words, in a way that benefits biodiversity and wildlife, which is what we're all after. Why don't they go for it? Thanks, Jim. So the, the, so the fact is the supporting support mechanisms aren't uh, what they were. They've changed and people seem not to have caught up with it and aren't really taking advantage necessarily. Jamie, what do you, uh, has, does this come across your desk? Is it do you, as the Wildlife Trust, have um, an approach to communicating with, with landowners and farmers like Jim and colleagues? 
Yeah, I mean, great contribution, Jim. Um, uh, just for awareness, and indeed, some may know Jim is a trustee of Hereford Wildlife Trust, and as a farmer, as he mentioned, so you know, you're hearing uh, directly from you know uh, farmers there. Um, I can only agree with the situation. Uh, I think cultural change around the the incentives and in the system that farmers as Jim quite rightly outlined, have been used to for the last 50 years, the post-war settlement, in, if you will, for farming, will take time to change. So look, it's about education, it's about sharing examples. Uh, we uh, in different places support what are called farm clusters, groups of different farmers developing their practice, other organisations like Herefordshire Meadows doing likewise. Um, so I think it has to be a kind of, you know, uh, leaning over the hedge, so to speak, to say what's good, getting one farmer to give it a go, and then that being shared, uh, thinking about that strategically in the relevant uh, places that are prioritised for nature. Uh, and I guess building from that link to some other questions in the chat, um, then yes, Lynn asks about the need for a map of where do we stand, where should we focus, and how will we get there? Really great question and timely because DEFRA under its what's called the Environmental Improvement Plan, uh, uh, has a, a, a statutory requirement for local councils to do just that. So Herefordshire Council currently working on a map of what's called nature recovery networks, the key places to focus. Uh, they have the responsibility to bring that forward during uh, the next financial year, 24 to 25. Um, and that will give us that kind of blueprint of where to focus, where to place our energy. A lot of what we know already know already, but it will clarify it and that will be consulted upon. So watch this space, be demanding of Herefordshire Council, uh, be in touch with Alyssa Swinglehurst, Cabinet Member for Environment and her team, if questions to ask there. Um, and Edward's question about what kind of uptake are we getting around farm advice, uh, then increasingly there's demand because this change, as Jim mentioned, is happening. Uh, it's going to, in effect, within the next few years, remove the kind of just farming or being able to being paid for farming alone without making a broader contribution to public goods as Jim outlined. So there's a kind of change point, uh, a transition point, and that will motivate farmers. Um, our focus uh, is to be focusing not on the most progressive who are already doing the work, nor the kind of laggards who will be slow to change, but the sweet spot are uh, kind of the, the farmers in the middle, so to speak, who know they need to change, are understandably under pressure economically, respectful of that, but where we can then, I hope, add value to provide win-win and make the complicated system that Jim spoke about easier to work with uh, and less confusing, whoever you are. Yeah, thank, thank you. And um, just while we're still on that subject of, of farmland and landowners, um, I see Mary Albright has popped a message into the chat um, saying that um, we, have, I'm not sure who we is that time, Mary, um, have found the environmental farm schemes um, very positive. Would you like to say a bit about that, Mary? Yeah, go for it. Oh, hang, sorry, Jackie, hang on a second. There we go. I've had terrible trouble with internet today. Um, so when I said we, I meant um, Border Oak, who I work for. We we purchased a farm a couple of years ago um, to try and play a part in the uh, phosphate um, situation. And uh, we, in part of that farm was a very old orchard that we hadn't realised was important. And we found that um, DEFRA were actually very surprisingly supportive and that there was support out there for us to look after the orchard, increase it and to replant the hedges, look after the hedges, put in fences in the right place, gates in the right place. Um, and then obviously the SFI payments, even at the lower level, entry level, are they're very encouraging for people to do this kind of work. And I think it will mean uh, some farms change maybe what they have done previously, but I think they're trying to um, support people to make that change for biodiversity and nature. Um, so as a new entrant to farming, if you like, we have found it really useful to help us know what to do. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, some of the outcomes have been really good. So all our hedges that have gone in um, and um, old hedges relayed, you know, they're really thriving. Uh, so, yeah, I think there is probably a bit more support out there. And, and the website is really good. I know you don't often say that about a government website, but it's actually really user friendly. There's a lot of people out there who respond really quickly um, we've just made um, 
uh, an application to join another scheme that they're offering and it went through seamlessly. So again, I don't want to say it's amazing, but I found it very useful and it's really shaping what we're doing. That's great to hear. Thank, thank you. Um, thanks for that, Mary. Um, I think maybe, Jamie, we'll move to um, a slightly different subject. That earlier on, there was a question from Matt Smith. Are you still with us, Matt? I'm not sure. Um, saying that what he wants to do is get involved on the ground. Um, are you still with us, Matt? He wrote, it's great to hear about all these projects between trusts and my reaction has been, particularly over the last year or two, how can I get involved on the ground? I've looked to find opportunities to get hands on helping with tasks such as tree planting, coppicing, but have come away disillusioned having found nothing. Oh, where can, well, where can yeah. people like me go? <laughs> clearly, clearly there's work work to do for myself and team and Wildlife Trust. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I would just say, um, yeah, uh, in terms of volunteering and making a contribution, there are loads of places, but we have our own volunteering uh, approach at the Wildlife Trust that can be on a nature reserve, on key landscape projects. I'll pop a link into the chat uh, to support if relevant. Um, but yeah, you can join a reserve, a kind of a group that heads out to a local nature reserve uh, close to you, a whole range of different options during the week. Uh, or there are some, you know, for example, I mentioned this why adapt to climate change is just starting in key, some key places across the catchment uh, to support communities and farmers work together. I guess I just say if at first you don't succeed, keep badgering us, keep calling us uh, and we'll uh, we have a dedicated volunteer coordinator who can find, I hope, the spot for you. If not with us, Herefordshire Meadows, uh, Herefordshire CPRE, citizen scientists, uh, all the people on this call and network that I know well will bite your hand off to help you get out there, I'm sure. Paris Tree Warden, there you go. Sally Webster has jumped in. Forgive me for forgetting that. That is a great one too. Yeah. Um, and um, of course, some people are then working with local groups, aren't they? Specifically, I think we've got, uh, have we still got Rob R? I think that's Rob Rimmer with us from Amley. Um, Rob, are you able to tell us some of the things that your group is doing in this in this area at the moment? Looks like Rob left us. Is there anybody else there from? Oh, no, I haven't left. I've just muted myself, Jackie. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's a lot. That, as you know, as you know very well, there's lots of other groups in the county, and we're just one of them. And there are colleagues on here who could speak probably more eloquently than I could about some of the activities that we've been involved in in Almley. But um, just most recently, we've been doing our um, uh, thermal imaging camera work for households across the winter where we've uh, having purchased a camera we've been going into people's houses once they've invited us of course and then done a, a, um, a sort of a heat loss survey and given them recommendations on how they might improve their energy efficiency um, Mike I know is on here too and has mentioned in the chat there about some of the active work he's he's been involved with with other volunteer colleagues about um placing various bird boxes around the place, which have been pretty successful. And probably the most significant project we're pursuing at the minute, which the Wildlife Trust does know uh, something about, is to try and uh, 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 really uh, open up again uh, Mayor Pond, uh, which is a, an Ice Age pond in our parish, which has been uh, rather neglected. And we think it could be a great recreational space and habitat um, improve its habitat diversity at the same time for the benefit of local people so we're we're looking for volunteers to help us with that work once we've hopefully landed a bit of a grant to support it there's lots of opportunities there really is great thank you thank you rob um we've had a message as well from um lindsay williams about coal orchard group um could you tell us a bit about what you're doing with the Orchard Group. And it looks as though you've also got um, a very nice event coming up in a couple of weeks. Hi, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent, sorry. I'm... Yeah. Right, uh, okay, Coal Orchard Group. Um, we, as was described before, we do a lot of volunteering. If anyone's in the area, 
mostly focused on traditional orchards, hedges, wildflower meadows, and so forth. Um, we have been working with the parish council due to a worrying decline in hedges in the area. We note, we did a survey and noticed that uh, hedges within the village had declined by 20% over a 10-year period. And so we've been surveying hedges throughout the parish and we've uh, got a pretty good map now of hedges and we're trying to work with local landowners to increase the number of hedges in the area, I guess. We're having a symposium on the 22nd of February, uh, tickets to Eventbrite, and the idea is to encourage other parishes to survey their hedges and to work with local people to create more hedges, really. Yeah, that's about it. But uh, if anyone's interested in coming, there's still tickets available. And we've got um, Megan Great. from... Sorry, yeah, we've got someone from the People's Trust for Endangered Species coming and uh, some others, external speakers. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Sounds great, doesn't it, Jamie? It does. And look, I, I, the Wildlife Trust isn't here to do it all. Uh, there's a myriad and um, wonderful network of great things which we're hearing about. So that's really encouraging. If we can be helpful, great. But yeah, the, the effort and the example that Lindsay just shared, brilliant. Um, all power to your elbow. Great. And also in the chat, we've got, um, as Rob mentioned, Michael Handley, who said he's made all of those um, nest boxes for a huge range of birds. And um, that's that's no mean feat, uh, let alone get, actually getting them up into the tree, having uh, experienced having experienced that. So there's there's a lot going on. And tell us a bit more, Jamie, about, you know, all of these efforts. What is it that we're trying to restore? We talk about species loss um, and the uh, and the habitat loss. Clearly, it's 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 not straightforward to restore habitat. It's even more tricky to get back those lost species. There was a report that came out late last year. Mm. Uh, was was the not just actually catalog and cataloging some of the details so yeah tell us about that if you, if you would sure of course um well yeah i'm just finding a link to the state of nature report which is probably the one you're referring to uh which is the kind of most comprehensive um approach to not understanding where we stand and it makes grim reading um the headline figures i've mentioned earlier um but yeah, I mean, if we understand kind of if we've got the problem of nature decline, what's the reason? Uh, the main reason, especially in our county, is the loss of habitat uh, and the destruction of it due to intensive agriculture, uh, combined with the intensive use of uh, agrochemicals. Um, that's the facts. Um, hot on the heels, so to speak, uh, would be climate change and invasive species uh, in influencing um, our species. And, you know, for example, the signal crayfish uh, killing off the white clawed crayfish, which is kind of the indigenous local crayfish, so to speak, as one example. Um, so let's just take the focus on habitat destruction. We know that we can farm differently, that we can farm in a way that works for nature and is friendly and is good for business. And Jim spoke to some of that direction. It's not going to be fast, but it can be done. Changes are being made. Great examples in our county. Uh, you know, Ben Andrews, as but one, a member of ours, but a member of many people's, uh, I think will have spoken to your network, if not already, hopefully he does soon as an example. Um, and then, yeah, the kind of traditional conservation practice, as I say, is to be creating these bigger, bolder, more joined up corridors. And there I introduced the language of wilder. That's the one we use for rewilding. Um, we just had, I won't go into the specifics, but um, there's a landowner who's just purchased a thousand acres of Heritage for farmland to rewild, to get at scale, uh, to be thinking about practices um, that uh, yeah will helpfully naturally allow ecosystems to regenerate and join up the dots and you know when nature is allowed to do what nature wants nature flourishes so doing less in some instances is the kind of key message rewilding respectful is you know not for everybody uh, there's a continuum uh, and indeed i guess all i'd say is that we're supportive of wilder of wilder farming appropriately uh, and you know we know that food production must, of course, continue, but there's a, certainly lots of room for improvement. Um, 
so yeah, I think that we have uh, a very positive future in one respect. Uh, and indeed, you know, all power and pressure on the next government um, in terms of using your vote to think about making sure you hear, you communicate the interests and desires you have. I think the recent polling we did as Wildlife Trust shows that swing voters or people who are unsure more accurately uh, that nature uh, is a key kind of swing issue. So shout loud and hold people to account. Um, others may want to chip in there. They might indeed. Thank, thanks, Jamie. And, can I, can I ch sorry, Jackie, I keep losing my um, the mute, mute thing. Can I just chip in quickly on the back of that shout for um, urban nature? Um, so that's all right, Jamie. <laughs> um, because, I mean, as Matt said, the uh, looking for volunteering opportunities. There are plenty in and around the city. We've got um, our new Barsham Meadows Reserve. We've got the Yeza Brooks Restoration Project going through it. So if if Matt or anybody else um, is looking for opportunities to get involved, there's plenty going on that uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. No, we, no we, I'm sorry, I'm afraid. I don't know you or I'm not recognising you. Um, can you tell me who you're... Sorry, that was me muted. Yeah, okay, you... That's okay. I'm Secretary of the City Branch of the Wildlife Trust. Great. For, for Hereford. For Hereford, yes. So that urban you. nature, whether it's market towns or the city or wherever, is, is also incredibly important, constantly under threat. Um, obviously, for some different reasons, but, you know, developments and all the rest of it. And, and often just that people don't realise that they actually can do something about Im improving it and fighting their their green spaces for their green spaces, etc. Really important. So let's please not forget urban nature. Definitely. Um, I just put a link to the project or one of the projects that Mo mentioned uh, in the chat. And yeah, we now have branches of which Mo is part of the Hereford one in Hereford, Ross, Lempster, uh, supported in Kington too. I think Bromyard is the, the only one we now need to keep going in terms of the major towns or city uh, across Hereford, Shear. Uh, but yeah, wherever you're living, I hope that, you know, if, if it's with us and that motivates you, there's friendly team and faces um, in those key places to connect to. That's really good. So essentially what we're hearing is that you've got or you're building a big resource to support the rest of us to actually take take action. And um, so it's not just about joining the Wildlife Trust and just about turning up to meetings. It's about uh, getting on with things and using those resources. One of the things we wanted to do, by the way, I remember now, Jamie, was uh, get a show of hands of who is a member um, of the Wildlife Trust. So I see Andrew de la Haye's got his hand up. Andrew, if you um, take it, well, I was just going to say, can you put up the little yellow hand that you'll find under reactions if you're a member and um let's get a sense of who we um have i can't find my reactions button now let's scroll through quite a lot and uh we'd love more people to be members <laughs> of Hereford Wildlife Trust and Hereford Green Network. So um, that's that's good to see. Thank you. Um, anyway, Andrew De La Haye, you had your hand up just now for being not necessarily a member of the Wildlife Trust. Would you like to ask your question? Oh no, no, I am. I am a member of the Wildlife Trust. I'm the chair of the Ross Branch, um, and I wanted to come back on what Jamie was talking about mapping earlier, and I wonder what support there is for local groups who want to really understand the nature of their area. So let's say the nature of Ross uh, and trying to literally map what is there in uh, for the benefit of nature and what the issues are. So wildlife corridors, um, uh, natural uh, habitats, uh, good natural habitats, barriers to wildlife migration, woodlands, uh, water, all those things. Uh, and you talked about Hereford Council. I know the A and B, uh, I think, have done something in the past as well. But where would, what support could we get and where could we go 
for that support to to really get a a really good idea of, of the situation around any of the market towns or even even out into the countryside. So uh, the first thing to say is that the council, and I'm just popping the link to their ecology page in chat, has a statutory responsibility uh, kind of placed on them by DEFRA to develop uh, a local, what's called a local nature recovery strat strategy and uh, supported by uh, another longish word or phrase, a nature recovery network map. So there's a deliverable that the council has the responsibility to map our key habitats, to identify where the current situation and indeed prioritise strategically places for recovery linked to habitat and species outcomes. So there's a link to the ecology page, uh, which I hope uh, you can reach there in the chat. And the council also has a responsibility to consult. Uh, I spoke to someone when I came to the Ross branch who's on the parish council, or forgive me, the town council of Ross, who was the kind of contact point with the county council. So yeah, join up the dots, shout loud there. That will take some time. Um, as I mentioned, we have resource to do some local wildlife site mapping. So if there's a key area or site that you think you'd like to have investigated, our team can do that with you. Um, and yeah, we have this developing approach called our Nature Action Network where one of the key steps is to, in a, in a common sense and sen sen sensible way, uh, we can support you to kind of get out there and make some notes, draw some pictures, take some photos to identify the key types of habitat. And then with our team, get advice about where to get started. You know, be that some key planting, uh, be that protection of some key sites, uh, campaigning for some investment. Um, so yeah, three things if appropriate, be in touch with the council. They will have to consult, so watch out for that. We will communicate on it. If you've got a special place, be in touch with us uh, for our local wildlife site survey work. Or thirdly, uh, there's a link in the chat to get you there, and I'll put our colleagues and um, email Tracy Price to join our Nature Action Network, where you can where we can start and support you to get practical and in a non-expert you know expert way, uh, just get out there and enjoy mapping, visualizing, recording, uh, and going from there. Thanks, Jamie. So um, two more questions then. You say get in touch with the council. What if you are the parish council? Um, I see that um, uh, Mary Albright put in a comment about some of the um, action that... Um, Well, she believes, but I'm not sure if it's happened where you live, um, Mary, but that any parish council or village group could set a, a policy to have, for instance, hedge boundaries instead of having um, having fences, etc. Are there other specific things that you would be able to advise parish councils to do or, you know, other pointers for parish councils? And do you speak specifically to them? Sorry, Jack, was that a question to Mary or myself? Apologies, I was focused. It was, it was, it was to you. Do maybe, I need to I'm so sorry. I was focused on getting some contact details, which I've just popped in the chat. Uh, uh, may you say the question once more? I, apologize. I will say the question once more. Um, you were talking about people contacting the council. What if they are the, the council? Wow. What steps can parish councils take specifically um, or get support from you? With great power comes great responsibility, doesn't it? So, uh, as I say, the council, the parish councils, as I understand it, will be in, all written to just to shape this overarching nature nature recovery strategy. Uh, we have some councillors on the call who may want to chip in, but the central council, so to speak, should engage and write to the parish council to consult them on what's your view on what should be in the local nature recovery strategy for your area. Um, I don't know the workings of parish councils very well, but I imagine the secretary or the clerk, forgive me if I'm getting the language wrong, uh, should receive that communication. And look, I'll go even further to put in the responsible officer's name to the chat with their email so you can make contact directly. That is Elizabeth Dubilly, who leads nature and nature management services at the council, reporting into Ross Cook, the director, and Alyssa Swinglehurst, the responsible cabinet member. Oh, I'll put them in the chat. So there's all politicians and officers accountable for you <laughs> that's, so great. that's great no that is important so while you're while you're doing that 
I won't ask too taxing a question because you're busy copying and pasting. However, I will encourage people to um, put any more questions into the chat just now uh, so we can pick up on those before we finish. Um, I can also say to people that we are recording this and like all the other HTN events, we will be um, notifying you through our newsletter once the, the link is there and we'll be putting it on the website too. So you will be able to have the chance to um, pick up on this. Um, but I do encourage you to save the chat given that we've got all of these links and um, we'll try to pick them up to, to put them in the accompanying text. But um, if you haven't ever saved the chat, there's a little thing at the bottom of your chat bar with three little dots. And if you click on that, it will give you the option to save chat. So now <laughs> I'm going to point Jamie to another subject. So if that's all right, Jamie, we've got a question about our rivers, um, which is, hang on a moment, there was one from, um, there we go. What progress, if any, do you, I'll just let this person in, what progress, if any, do you see on the state of our rivers? Is there any hope of the Environment Agency starting to take any action to yeah. reverse some of the harms being done? Well, uh, let's stay hopeful. And the hope is this. Um, in practical terms, I mentioned this scheme called uh, the Landscape Recovery Scheme and Yscapes. So that's an area of over 5,000 hectares, the key corridors of the Y and the Lug, um, and will be a 20-year, if it all goes well, program to change land use uh, in those river corridors. That has the potential to have an influence um to it's about you know five percent potentially of Hereford's to his total land and to change the direction of the big kind of tanker so to speak of intensive agriculture um i think that positively uh look uh, i we, i'm not going to be party political here but i'm sure it's highly likely the bookies will tell you that we're going to have a change of government so what the next secretary of state does uh for uh the river Y should be important to you uh the shadow secretary of state is currently called steve reed mp for croydon north of all places so invite him to herefordshire get him out to see the Y. uh be shaping the labor party's plan for rivers uh they've released some uh, detail I'm sure that you will want to see more. Um, that's positive because that's change, isn't it? But calling for the um, investment and funding of the Environment Agency. Uh, look, my experience of it is this, that uh, on the ground, officers of the Environment Agency want to do the right thing, are working hard. But the austerity approach to funding of our Environment Agency and Natural England simply means that they are set up to fail. They can't publicly say that because they're not politicians and not accountable uh, to be able to communicate that message, but get them privately and they'll tell you that. We haven't got the resource to do our job to enforce the regulations. And indeed there's a political message which says don't properly enforce. Uh, I think that's common knowledge to all that are close to our rivers. So it's hopeful that can be changed and that funding can appropriately be bought brought back in um i think you you know as i say i've kind of got, maybe i don't want to go too far but you know the labor party probably will leave the government and therefore the 28 billion pounds which may go into nature environment and all the other things should be a key ask of any candidate uh that is standing pretty shocking if that's being uh downgraded uh speaking personally uh, on that one um there's Joe Emmett in the chat saying that he's invited Steve Reed. Very good. Uh, that might we will look forward to that. Uh, obviously, Herefordshire South potentially a key battleground in the in the months and weeks ahead. Um, bit of pressure there. Um, yes. Uh, what else is helpful? The citizen science effort, which is now coordinated, joining up the dots, mapping and showing what's happening. That shows the awful things, but it means that there's the data and the evidence. Um, and lots of effort to campaign uh, on the supply chain, to be developing a rivers manifesto from the citizen science networks and campaigners, Save the Y, CPRE Herefordshire, Friends of the Y, now just one Y rather than upper and lower. I've waffled on for far too long. There's great hope in there. Not at all. Well, then that's good. And I think what we can certainly agree on is that the... Um, 
the rivers are in everybody's viewfinder now in a way that just a few years they, ago they absolutely weren't, were they? So um, this is surely going to focus attention more. Here we are, we've got another question about insect life. We're going to absolutely exhaust you, um, Jamie, but we will we will finish shortly because the, the Q&A has been pretty intensive. And this poor man needs his cup of tea. Right, so um, I don't know if you can see the question from Judy, uh, which is key loss in the natural world being insect loss. Um, I won't read out the question, but would you like to say something on that? This has been a long running campaign of the Wildlife Trusts. I'm going to get the terminology wrong here, but um, yeah, I think shockingly, the government said they were going to ban the use of neonicotinoids, for example, and then roll back in their current implementation of that legislation or policy. Again, I think for the third or fourth year running, it's becoming a bit boring, isn't it? That this is they say one thing and then fail to do another thing. Um, so the Wildlife Trust has been calling for that. Uh, it will be a key ask of any uh, political party or government have, that has been forming. And indeed, we asked Herefordshire Council uh, to ensure that they were not using uh, um, inappropriate chemicals in their supply chain, in their contracting. Um, and indeed, I think they've confirmed that that's the case. Um, so look, we've got to keep keep going to ask national government uh, to uphold all that was progressed under the EU legislation from my perspective to implement that change. I'd hope that a new government would have no fear of doing that. It's common sense. They're crazy, aren't they? Can, can I just ask one question? Of course, Judy. Um, read, read that. Um, I mean, is there a, are, we, are we in any way monitoring the insect loss in Herefordshire? Is there a way to do that or perhaps work together with other Hereford, uh, wildlife trusts? Because in a sense, I feel we need to have some concrete information about the loss. I fear that the, year on year, the, the loss is dreadful, actually. And because of the use of pesticides and herbicides, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's as serious an issue as you know the the state of the rivers, really. And I just wonder if the Herefordshire Wildlife Trust and other wildlife trusts can't sort of get together to mm -hmm. seriously monitor it and then you know campaign boldly mm -hmm. for 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 the reduction of herbicides and pesticides. Actually, yes. So. Uh, I couldn't agree more with you to the best of our ability. Yes, the the how of doing it is totally within our power. Uh, mm -hmm. Being open and honest, the challenge we as a relatively small trust face is the capacity to do it. Um, so our approach is to be like with Rivers Citizen Science to picking some key areas, some key corridors, some key places. Uh, we were aiming to focus on recovering the noble chafer uh, as a key species uh, in the Woolhope Dome area. Sadly, that funding application was unsuccessful, but um, we keep on. We aren't currently doing all that you would want to, that you've described there, but we aspire to appropriately do it. Do it. Uh, and indeed the Herefordshire Record Centre, kind of the ecological data monitoring centre run by Herefordshire Council uh, has a responsibility to do that. If you go to our website, we can help you lo lo log, forgive me, uh, a kind of species record that goes into national databases and then into the biodiversity, into the biodiversity uh, data center locally too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is my time up, Jackie? What do you reckon? It's been a flourish, a wonderful you... set of questions. Um, happy to keep going, but my only we thing have. I, I'm amazed, amazed, and thank you as well for this huge, great resource that um, of, of all of the links as well. So we will be um, taking care to share that. Is there anybody else with us who um, wants to comment or ask a question? Um, we've talked a fair bit about politics. I see that Councillor Ellie Chance has joined us. Um, again, very active in this area, so she may or may not wish to say something. Um, there she is, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, for the invitation. Sorry, I, I think it's probably a really bad time to say something when everybody's clearly 
<laughs> desperate to get to their cuppa. Um, just to say that I'm just such a strong supporter of the Wildlife Trust work. Thank you so much, Jamie. Sorry I joined late today. I'm really sorry to have missed the discussion, the beginning of the discussion. I think the Wildlife Trust and, you know, there's a whole range of local projects as well, affiliated in various ways with the Wildlife Trust, doing an amazing job, you know, driving forward this kind of the, the translation of the love of nature that everybody in Herefordshire has into actual policy change. And um, I, too, hope to see real political change. Jamie did the plug uh, for South Herefordshire. Uh, I'll make the plug for the opportunity for change in North Herefordshire at the next general election. And whatever everybody in this room is doing to, you know, make things better here, just massive congratulations and thanks to everyone. Great. Well, I'll end with this is that we will, of course, be organising a non-party prioritising hustings or such like. Uh, I'm sure this network will, but we're keen to collaborate uh, with anybody and all who would like to organise one big focused one. Uh, but please, of course, the more the merrier. So we'll be doing that. And yeah, look, be it on rivers, on recording, on volunteering. Uh, there's some links in the chat. If you don't find what you need, uh, by all means, uh, be in touch. Um, I will leave with um, my email and mobile phone if helpful. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks, Ellie. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks for wonderful questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Jamie. And I don't know if um, people do um, kind of virtual uh, virtual applause, but um, very much applause to you. And um, thank you, everybody, as well, for taking part. Thank you for your questions. Um, Try to save that chat. I have. We'll um, do our best to circulate it because there's so much information in it. Thank you all and goodbye.